Hi, my name is Maurice Monksunger. I'm the current Poet Laureate of Erie County, Pennsylvania. And this is Picture This, Residents Respond by Writing. It's a three-part series of workshops. It's part two of a series of workshops that is being offered through the Erie County Poet Laureate Initiative in connection with Erie Arts and Culture. So let's get started. The um, Picture This, Residents Respond to Fine Art. We're going to be um, looking at the process of react and respond for each time we write. Usually people respond and then they react, but what I'm asking you to do is to uh, react and just write whatever comes to your mind when, you, when I'm asking you to um, comment or take a few minutes to write or jot your feelings down, I want you to react on page. I don't want you to think about anything about whether you should be writing it, shouldn't be writing it, censor yourself, look at anything that worries or concerns you. Just get down whatever pops into your mind and write as quickly as you can. The beat poet Allen Ginsberg said, first words, best words, and that's what I'm talking about when I say write as, as quickly as you can without censoring yourself. So the conventions do not apply. I used to be an English teacher, and I know most people get so freaked out and think about whether a word's spelled correctly, whether a word's used correctly, whether a word is, um, has the correct punctuation in a sentence. And while those things are very important when you actually respond by writing a poem or a prose poem or an essay or whatever you choose to do with the content you uh, work with here and create here, what you need to do is just let go of those conventions and just write. One other thing I would strongly suggest is if you're comfortable writing in cursive handwriting, write with a pen or a pencil, but a pen is preferred because it, it writes more smoothly, and paper. If you're very into electronics and you need to use a stylus, go ahead and use a stylus and still write in cursive if you can. If you need to print, then that's fine, but writing in cursive activates a part of your brain that allows you to tap into your creativity. Morning Mist. This is a pre-write photograph I took of Lake Erie on a walk that I recently took. If you look at the light that's just dancing off of it, and I'd like you to consider when you first wake up in the morning, what is it like when it's still misty, when you're still between sleeping and being fully awake? What are some of the images? What are some of the sight sounds that you recall, maybe parts of dreams that you remember? And put those images down to paper. Put those down and write them as quickly as you can, as fluidly as you can, and do that for the next five minutes. This painting is a piece of fine art that rests right behind the circulation desk at Blasco Library. You may have passed it many, many times and not even known it. It's Morning Mist by Arthur Parton, who lived between 1842 and 1914. Arthur Parton was a celebrated landscape artist from the Hudson, New York region. He began to exhibit his work at age 22. Naturalism and later Impressionism were key movements expressed in his work. This scene looks like it may have come from a view of a pasture off of I-90 or I-79 right here in Erie County. What emotions does this painting evoke? Notice the stream widens as it gets closer to the viewer and that the skyline and the trees appear to blur. Does this look familiar to you and how? Finally, does the highly decorated frame enhance or detract from the painting itself? Take 10 minutes to respond to this work. Remember, first words, best words. Morning mist, an extended metaphor. When we look at morning mist and look at this candle burning brightly, we think of the times that it implies between night and dawn. 
Parton's oil painting showed a blending of the earth to sky through impressionistic strokes that finally blur tonal colors of the trees to the sky and the earth, the earth to the water's edge. This impressionism gives way to transcendentalism in a movement from precision to detail to invoked detail. So I suggest that there may be a metaphor in the painting's composition. The softening images are like softened emotions. Where do you draw your comfort from, to, or where do you find comfort? It can be physical or spiritual in nature. Take 10 minutes to write any impressions you have. Remember, there are no right or wrong answers. Here is our next pre-write, Eternal Vigilance. When you look at this picture, consider, have you ever been benched professionally or personally in life? Have you ever felt such disappointment that you can't really get on with things? You feel stuck, you feel frustrated. What I'd like you to do is take a few minutes, take about five minutes, and write about a time or a current situation where you feel stuck in life. This image is of eternal vigilance, a statue that rests in front of the Area Art Museum on State Street, created by artist John Silk Deckard. A moment of tortured humanity captured in 500 pounds of bronze. Why would the feet and hands be larger than the rest of the sculpture? Commissioned in 1978, some of the artist's historical references may have come from the first half of the 20th century with the impact of two world wars as well as the Korean War and Vietnam era wars. We've all felt crippled with fear, defeat, and resignation at times. Notice the image is physically imposing. It is sunken in deep grief. Take 10 minutes to write about either current or past incidents that have created eternal vigilance in your own life. It could have been a job loss, death in the family, or any other great disappointment. Eternal vigilance and extended meaning. Here's a beautiful sunset. Will you consider this picture Think of this, endings have metaphorical meanings. Sometimes when something has gone bad for a very long time, we find comfort in an ending. I am thinking here of my aunt who recently passed away from stage four cancer. When she went, she passed peacefully. She had lived three years longer than her doctors had predicted. When have you experienced an ending that felt like a huge relief? Perhaps it was with a very bad relationship or a job that just did not suit you or maybe a downsizing from a larger home to a smaller one. Putting that house on the market was very hard, but in the end it felt right to leave it to a younger family. Take five minutes to write about whatever pops up. Nimbus, this is a pre-write image that I'd like you to look at and consider. When we talk about a nimbus, we bring to mind cloud formations or halos around the heads of angels, saints, and other heavenly figures. This image was taken from a show at the Jewish Museum of Art in New York City. The clothing in this work is all modeled after religious imagery found in the world's religions woven into lace dresses and gowns. We see this locally in the stoles of ministers and priests. We see this in the iconic logos of trade unions that are often on clothes of industrial workers. We see patterns from nature being repeated in everyday fashion. 
Consider how stripes and polka dots and stars are used in everyday objects. How does religion, nature, or the mathematical inspired shapes find their way into your life? Write down any impressions that you might have. This image, Nimbus, is created by David Sitzinger. It's from 1978. This hanging glass mobile is described by the artist as a time machine. It hangs in the Erie Art Museum. If something, anything, could be changed in your life, what would that be? There is both an artistic and literary movement known as magical realism. It uses fantastic or mythic images that are brought into stories. Consider the children's movie, Polar Express, where the young man who no longer thinks that Santa exists, experiences a dreamlike sequence of events to lead to his return to innocence. What images come to mind, say a magic wand, a time machine that can be used to travel to change time? Describe the impression you came up with as you write for 10 minutes. Try to capture the images as vividly as possible. Nimbus can be used as an extended metaphor to describe a gift you'd like to give to yourself, to another, or to the world. Consider the metaphor of Nimbus being a halo. What sacred, special, or holy thing can come forth out of your own personal narrative to heal both yourself and your community? My father used to say to my siblings and I, take each day and make it the best for you and those around you. Now take about five minutes to write about the imagery associated with the halo and good works and the nimbus. Now we're going to look at the components of a poem called an elegy. What you're going to first do is think of a person, a loved one, or even a well-known figure like Abraham Lincoln, and think of them a, a person that's deceased. Steps to creating an elegy. First, you're gonna choose a person or a place that has qualities of being deceased. Here in Erie County, we have the name Perry, as in Perry Monument, Griswold, and other famous people of our region. You're going to rhyme the couplets, which means every two lines rhyme. This is likened to hip hop music. This is a sad poem that honors the dead with events of the deceased, with events surrounding the time he or she was alive. There are metaphorical comparisons that help with the subject to be extended. Towards the end of the poem, the poet usually tries to provide comfort to his audience by turning sorrow into hope, misery into mercy, etc. Give the poem a title that adds to the meaning of the piece. An example from literature that you may remember is Walt Whitman's, O oh, Captain, My Captain. The final thing we're gonna do in this video is look at free verse poems. Free verse poems do not have any fixed rhyming, any fixed structure. You create the structure yourself. A lot of people write long poems often. What I would say with free verse is to try to go very short or at least moderate. You're going to be writing and finding 10 images of one of the writing prompts that you did. And from that, circle those 10 images, the vivid ones, and put them on the top of a paper. When you write them on the top of a paper, look at the relationships they have with each other. Maybe some of them sound alike. Maybe they evoke the same type of images of water, of industry, of uh, relationships with one another. And then you're going to write the poem and see if there's any form of alliteration or there can be rhyme, but it doesn't necessarily need to have rhyme. 
and other forms of repetition or other literary devices you might want to use. When you get to the end, give it a title that adds to the meaning of the poem. There are many different ways you can use poetry, either for your own use or your own entertainment, but if you want to share it with other people, there are different formats for it. One is a chapbook. And I don't know if everyone knows everyone knows that term or not. Chapbooks are books that are typically under 40 pages. This one is by um, my friend Myra Shapiro, and it's called In Greenwich Village We Talk of Love. And in it, there are, it's all handmade, and in it are photographs that go with the poems. And it's all about New York City and her experiences in New York. Another example of a chapbook, and a lot of times they have ribbons or other embellishments, is Mentor's Bouquet by my friend Linda Leedy Schneider, who was the editor. And these are poems that were put together from her writing class. So it's different people submitted the work and put together a chapbook of their classes. And this is a handcrafted chapbook by my friend Diane Borsnick, who runs Night by LA Press in Cleveland. Handbound, handmade paper of poems that she's written. If you submit to other works, there's anthologies. So these are different poems of great poets, but they have local anthologies also. And then there's collections, like these are the best loved poems of Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, and they were put together and introduced poem by poem by her daughter, Carolyn Kennedy. So there's many different ways that you can put uh, poetry together. I have my chat book, is Mud and Stars. Here are some poems that are examples of elegy. And elegies are poems that are written for, um, as a memorial to a person who has passed on. Sometimes the poems have um, extended meanings and metaphors that are within them as well, such as this poem, O Captain, My Captain, by Walt Whitman. It talks about a sea captain that the captain is really is a, an elegy for Abraham Lincoln after he passed away. There is a list at the end of this video of all the poems that we discussed in class for you to use, including Oh Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman. This is the conclusion of, picture this, residents respond by writing to fine art. This is the second in a series of workshops. The third and final workshop is Picture this, residents respond by writing to photography. I look forward to seeing you then.